Good day and welcome back to Practical Christian Living with me, Jonathan Phillips. Today I would like to read out of Hebrews 4 verse 15 to 16 and it reads as follows, it says, For we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are. I want to pause there for a moment. So here we know the author, the writer is speaking about Jesus, saying that we have a high priest in being Jesus that is able to empathize with the weaknesses that we have, which regardless of which country you live in, regardless of what is happening in your life currently, Jesus can empathize with that, which means he can relate to that. We often have this perception that God does not know. He cannot possibly understand what I am going through. But this is God we're speaking about. And it goes on further and it says, even though we went through all of these things, he, his, his life was positioned in a way that he's able to empathize with us. Yet he did not sin. So let us then approach God's throne of grace and confidence so that we may receive and find mercy and grace to help us in our times of need. Are you in need today? So what I want to get into quickly in this particular segment is the practicality of our faith. Now, there's a concept that I would like to share with you and it's a concept of ornament versus tool. An ornament is something that is just used and marveled at and looked at. It's not, it doesn't really have a purpose beyond just physically looking at it. I remember with my mom, my mom had this thing called brasso. I don't know if you have that. Or it's, 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 it's this brass ornament and it needed to be polished. <laughs> you know, once a week we had to polish this thing. And my mom had a lot. It was, she had some stuff It was passed down from her mother and you know, as generational things but it took a lot of work to clean this brass items to make it shine and why because it needs to be used no simply because it needs to be placed on a shelf and to be marveled at yes it was beautiful but there was no purpose beyond that I could not play with my mother's brasso the grandchildren could not play with the brasso it was just something to be looked at but then you have a tool a hammer a screwdriver it's something that regardless of how clean or dirty it is, it never robs the, the item of its functionality. So it was designed to be used for something. In actual fact, if the tool was not used, in its, it, it, it would most likely be thrown away or given away, but it had a purpose. It needed to be picked up and utilized for a particular function. So today I want to pose a question to you. What type of description fits your Christian faith where your Christian faith is simply something that you keep on a shelf and you marvel at that uh, your Sunday church attendance those particular messages all that it is is something for you to take from the Sunday place on a shelf and say wow I heard this oh that was awesome and the wording we use wow that was powerful but it never really touches or transforms my life then it is a ornament or is your life a tool your Christian life a tool where God gives you and gives you certain things from his word or via uh, inspiration of Holy Spirit and he instructs you in the way that you need to go and you apply it in your life and you are the person you are today the sum total of who you are today as a believer is because of the how you've taken the the Bible and you've made it practical you've practically applied it in your life and now you are the person today you've used the Bible as a tool in actual fact when you pray God gives you the tool from the Word of God in the form of the scripture and you've applied it in your life it wasn't something that you just placed on your status or you know you've you've, you've printed it out placed it on your wall no you've broken down the scripture and found out how do I need to use this tool that you've given me Lord and you've applied it in your life now only one of them will grant you success the Pharisees had an ornament lifestyle where they had these fancy robes on and the validation of their faith or their level of faith was determined by the type of clothing they wore, by the way they spoke, uh, by the way they walked, by the associations with various people. We can't mix with you, we can't mix with you. But then you look at Jesus and Jesus comes on the scene not needing to wear a 
this, 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 this robe, this fancy robe, all that he was. And he said it at a young age, I am about my father's business. What is Jesus saying? That I am a tool and I need to be utilized. That I'm, 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 I'm thinking uh, Jesus was basically, uh, you know, he was a competent. He, he understood the principle of having the right tool for the right job. That is why when you look at the life of Jesus, the way you heal the blind man today is not the same way you will heal another blind man tomorrow. He needs to realize what tool is required for your life. A lot of times we make the mistake to think, oh, because that worked for you in your Christian life, now I'm going to apply it as is and I'm going to apply it in my life and we find it doesn't work and we question, but Lord, why? What's, what's happening here? No, it's not a one size fits all. What works for the next Christian doesn't necessarily work for you. What? works for you and the only way to, to to discover that is when we see God with everything that we have seek him in prayer seek him in worship seek him in when we read his word uh, seeking when we spit in and when we meditate uh, in, on, on his word when we spend time with him when you seek him what is he communicating to you let us do what the Bible says the Bible is very clear it says without faith it's impossible to please God but then it goes further and it says faith without works is dead in other words if you if i give you the tool and you don't use it it is dead i'll give you another reference point in terms of the talents where the, uh, the 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 ruler gave these gentlemen various amounts of money and the one that he had the most problem was is the one that did not bring interest in other words the one that did not work it did not uh, try and m uh, multiply it he was just content with oh you've given it to me and i'm returning it to you just as is God is looking for a harvest on the seed that is planted. The seed is, is, is the life of the sun. But it's dependent on you adjusting your mindset and moving away from, from an ornament lifestyle, Christian lifestyle, and embracing a Christian life that is fashioned around tools. In terms of what tools do I need, Lord? How do I become successful in my walk with God? And the only way we do that is when we roll up our sleeves of our Christian faith and we decide and we are tell God, Lord, I'm ready. What is it you require of me? So beloved, may you today look in the tool shed of your Christian life and may God guide you today in terms of what you need to utilize to make a success of your Christian life and bring forth a bountiful harvest to our Lord and Savior. Jesus Christ. Amen.